Hello, everyone. Are y'all ready to play a card game? That better not be a part of my deck. Oh, crap. Here he comes with the hammer. Man, every time he gets pissed, he always uses the hammer. He does know that it's hard to fix this body on my own. Yeah, I think he just smashed my ocular nerve into my side of my skull. Uh, hello everyone, welcome back to the Indie Stream, Rossa, your host. And we're going to be talking about this month's game, Hands of Fate. A unique style of a roguelike, card-based RPG game. While I fix my eye, let's talk about what the merchandise inside the box. This time is going to be the shortest of the merchandising of the Indie Box because right now, as usual, they gave us the instruction manual to the game along with the sticker and the design of the, the theme of Hand of Fate and the heart which will represent your life meter throughout the whole game. And one of the reasons why I didn't bring up the soundtrack with the instruction manual sticker is because of the fact that Indie Box started to notice a little bit of a problem with the USBs. That some people's USBs aren't working with the computers. So I decided to change that by giving you all CDs. So with the sides of the game, they also gave you the soundtrack to this whole game. And I'm surprised they decided to use CDs. How primitive. 1998 is not primitive. Shut up, Fleshlink. The unique items they gave us is a satchel and at the same time a deck of cards from the series Hand of Fate. But before we discuss if it connects to the game, Yes and no. When I mean yes, it act these cards are actually designed in the style of the game, but in the same way, there's nothing more the equivalency of those poker cards you play. And they even changed up the names of what's on the card, as in saying that a club is now a dust, a diamond is a plague, a heart is a skull, and a spade is scales. These were all changed differently, and I should talk more about the style of the game later on. Good, adjustment's complete. Well, IndieBox ain't doing the PAX this month. I don't know why, maybe it's because of the fact that they're, they're getting themselves ready for the PAX for next month, but right now, all the unique items they gave you was a satchel and a deck of cards. Oh well, let's see what this game's all about. <laughs> play as an adventurer who travels to the ends of the earth to play a card game with, wait a minute, is that the merchant from Resident Evil 4? What are you buying? So let me sum it up. Basically you're not doing this style of card game. You're actually doing a combination of th this kind of game with a little bit of this. Eh, you mortals really want to find a way to kill yourselves. I suggest that y'all just go out, grab some rope, and just hang yourself. Oh, say! Fine, fine. When I use the D&D reference, it actually means it because you're going to be traveling through card to card and solving any situation how you want it with their own random game of chance to see the outcome. And just like in D&D, every time you pick a new level or the same level, it's always going to be changing on the outcome of how it could be. Some game plays you to be successful, and others you are going to fail horribly. Eh, that's how D&D is. Don't worry, the whole game is not all D&D style. When you get to a battle stage, you're going to be in the style of a hack and slash, using, let's go with Batman Arkham combat settings, because there is a punch, there is a dodge, there is blocking, and then there's the counter move. Yeah, Rocksteady should have patented that combat design. The last two things to the game is, one, is a food meter that you have. Besides health and gold, you have a food meter where if you survived any of the hack and slash phases of the game, every time you make a move, you'll be able to recover your health by using the food. But at the same time, it comes with a flaw. Every time you take a step, you consume food. What are you, a jet propulsion engine? Anyway, if you run out of food, you'll start to take damage. And sorry I didn't record the, that part of the game. I never retook really any damage after running out of food. So that's a one problem. And lastly, there's an autosave feature. For every time you make a move, 
the game autosaves. So there, after you make that move, you can turn off the game, do what you have to do, and then start up the game again, and you'll be just where you left off. But at the same time, it is a double-edged sword, because if you screwed up a turn, you are stuck with a save file that you are literally about to lose. The bright side is, is that you can forfeit the round, but you have to start over again. Not at that, at that level, not at the whole game, so that's a good part. How I feel about this game, it's not that bad. The style of the D&D games, I have never played that style, but I'm pretty sure it will be enjoyable in that style with a combination of hack and slash. And, hope, and hopefully the Defiant Game Company has able to get the game Hand of Fate 2 out in time, so when this video is over, I can play on that game, seeing that they have more features to the game, like a win conditions. Stay tuned for the next indie stream, where we'll be fishing out the game, The Stanley Parable. Till then, this is Rosse, logging off. Rosse proceeds to get up and go to the cell phone so he can call his girlfriend an 800 pound battleship. Really, BV? Really? You're supposed to be annoying Rasa, not me. Okay, I'm practicing for the next video game. Likely. Yeah. Credits roll on, knowing that hopefully that we do not get a YouTube copyright strike from Defiant or by the indie box. SHUT UP!